Hi guys, Jordan here from Artisan Electrics. I've just made a quick step-by-step -step guide of how to install a Hive active heating thermostat. We installed this in a little cottage and it helped make the system a lot smarter. So I hope you like this video. If you do, give us a thumbs up and put any comments below that things that you might wonder about. We can see if we can answer any of your questions. So today I'm going to be installing one of these Hive active heating smart thermostats and uh, this is an installation it's got a oil boiler and a programmer for the heating and hot water at the moment with a room thermostat in the hallway and uh, so we're gonna pop this baby in and um, make the heating a little bit smarter in this little cottage so just to open up the box and show you what's inside got first of all the actual room thermostat here which is battery powered so it's got four AA batteries included nice treat because a lot of companies don't provide batteries with their products uh, you've got some instruction booklets here so we've got the little welcome booklet for the customer user guide and this is the installation guide which is what we'll be using for the installation then this is what replaces the programmer so this is actually the thing that does the switching to turn on and off the hot water and central heating so this replaces the existing central heating and hot water programmer and then under here we have what they call the hub which is a internet device which connects via a uh, data cable to the Wi-Fi router, the home Wi-Fi router, and it's got a little power connection as well, so you do need a spare power socket for these. And then get that open. You've got the plug for the hub there couple of screws and raw plugs, you've got the power cable for the hub and we've got the data cable here as well. And that's everything that's in the box. So what we do first of all, first things first, is we connect the hub to the router because that needs some updating often to the software so we need to give it maybe 15 minutes to update the software so get that plugged in and then that can be working away while we're installing the rest of the equipment so plug the power cable in there plug the data cable in This little plug has a little earth pin that pulls up like that, and then it's just a USB to actually plug into that, and that's ready to go. So let's plug this in and get it working. So we've got the router here, and it actually is a USB socket in the back of this so I'm wondering if we would be able to power it from this. Let's have a look. Uh -huh. Yes, fantastic. So that means we don't actually need to use this power plug and then we just use a spare point in the back of the router there to plug that in. Gives that an internet connection. So you see the green light is flashing. We leave that. That's going to work away, and eventually this middle light will f flash amber, and that shows it's ready to pair. Now in here we've got our existing programmer 
that was just on there so I've just taken the two screws out from underneath just lift the cover up and that comes off and what we're going to do is put the hive unit over the top of that I don't know if we'll be able to use the existing base plate or if we'll have to change that some of them are compatible with the front of the hive uh, so we'll see if that's going to fit or not now you can see the hive hub has updated the green light is solid uh, which means everything's okay with the software and now the amber light is flashing which means it's in pairing mode ready to pair with the receiver and the thermostat so we're going to put the thermostat on now and everything should pair up together. Now you can see that the Hive Hub has downloaded what it needed to download. It's got up to date. The green light is solid now and the amber light is flashing which means it's in pairing mode. It's ready to pair with the other items on the system. Now I must emphasise how important it is that before you do any work on the electrical system you check to make sure the power's off. So. What we use is this flute volt, fluke volt alert and um, we already checked to make sure it's working properly it was the lighting up before now the whole system's dead because we've isolated it at the switch fuse spur for the heating system so that's all nice and dead but please make sure you turn the power off before you work now un unfortunately this existing base plate isn't compatible with the Hive base plate, it just doesn't fit. So we're gonna remove this base plate and install the Hive re receiver's base plate. But the wiring connections are exactly the same. The order, the numbers, everything is the same. So we just take one wire out, put a new wire in, in exactly the same position. Okay, and that's it. So we've replaced the base plate with the new Hive receiver base plate. Put the wires back in the right places. And now we're ready to fit the cover. That just clicks on and then there's a couple of screws that we have to do up underneath. Once you've fitted the cover it's good to just test to make sure it's working manually by pressing the individual buttons. So I've pressed the central heating button and straight away the boiler's kicked in which is exactly what we want to hear. Uh, the, the light goes green, solid green when you press the button and it kicks in. Then when you press the button again it flashes green like it was just doing and then it goes off after a few seconds. So we can test the hot water now. The light goes solid green, you can hear the boiler kicking in there, which is exactly what we want to hear. And then to turn it off again, we press the button once more, it will flash green for a few seconds, and then it will turn off. Now when everything's paired correctly, you should have a green light on the hub. And you should have a green light at the top there on the receiver, and that means everything's paired. So we've got an existing Honeywell room thermostat here at the moment. What we're going to do is remove that and put the new Hive thermostat in its place. So we need to undo the um, cover and that just clicks off. And there's a screw at the top that we need to undo as well. be able to loosen that and then it comes off and then the actual wiring we're not going to use because the high thermostat is just wireless and it's battery powered so we're just gonna to have to make these wires safe uh, tuck them away somewhere so that, uh, that it's safe or we might even disconnect them from the um, wiring center in order to make them completely out of the way. So the high room thermostat has a, a little tab on the bottom here. You unclick that and then that removes the base. In the back you've just got space for the batteries. Um, so what we do is we mount the base first. Should be mounted at 1.5 meters high approximately and away from any sources of heat like radiators or anything like that. We'll mount that up in place of the existing room thermostat. Okay, so we've uh, removed the old room thermostat and uh, just tucked the wires back into the hole there. Um, they're completely 
uh, removed and isolated, but at least they're accessible in the future if they ever need them again. And now we're going to fit the hive room. Now oh, I absolutely love it when companies do things like this. Okay, spacing of the holes is standard spacing, so they match exactly. So all we need to do is put screws in. We can reuse the existing holes, which is such a time saver. And there we go. That's the base plate mounted up, ready to fit the thermostat. So here we've got the wiring centre, and you can see that three core an earth grey cable coming into the side. That's the cable, the, um, the cable that goes to the room thermostat. So what we're gonna do is just bridge those terminals out so that it's calling always for heat uh, in, in that way. And then we don't need to connect the wires to the thermostat. So you can see at the moment, the red wire that goes into the grey cable to going to the room thermostat, that's the permanent live, which basically comes from this. Uh, this wire goes into the programmer, and when the program's calling for heat, it sends power down this wire to the room thermostat. Then when the room thermostat says it's not warm enough, it sends power back down this yellow cable, which goes to this white cable, which is the motorized valve that opens the valve and that means the system starts to call for heat. So what we need to do is just disconnect these two and connect this wire and this wire together. And then that will remove the room thermostat out of the equation, the current room thermostat, and it will just work properly over the wireless hive system. Okay, so that's done. So now you can see I've connected this uh, heat cooling wire directly to the white cable that goes to the motorised valve and we've just disconnected the existing room stack cables so that they're safe and we can just tuck them away at the other end. We won't cut them off completely because you never know in the future they might want to install a, a normal traditional thermostat again so we leave the cabling in place just in case. So we're going to pop the batteries into the thermostat. They all go in the same way. Like that. And there we go, it's lighting up and booting. And now we're gonna pop it on to the base. It just slots in at the top there, and then clicks down. And that's it. So we can select English. And now it's going to go into pairing mode. And that's it, it's paired. So um, that's it, it gives you a little tour if you want. Um, so we can go through the tour. Turn the dial to make a selection. Press the back button to take back your previous choice. Menu button. Press the tick button to confirm the completion of the task. So on top here we've got two buttons, hot water boost button and central heating boost button. And that's it. So it'll take us through the scheduling now. So we want the uh, start time of the slot. Should our home be at temperature? or start heating. Well, let's go for B at temperature. Ready by, we learn how long your home takes to heat up, that's good. So we have 6.30 to 8.30, 4.30 to 10, that's fine. And hot water, we'll do that as well. Schedule that, that's fine. So it's actually only 11.8 degrees in here at the moment. We can turn the temperature up to 20 degrees, for example. And then we can hear the boiler kicking in, which is great. 